Hello and welcome in today's live. Today we're going to be talking about vitamin D and PCOS, how they are connected and should we be taking them. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> So I hope you can see me well. I hope you can hear me well. Uh, welcome to, to today's live, our weekly live every Tuesday at 5 p.m. London time. I hope that you are doing good today. I decided to go with a little bit more light today. Hopefully you can see me well. Let's just bump it up a little bit. Yeah, do it color perfect. So today, as I said, we're going to be talking about vitamin D and PCOS and what is the connection. So without further, further, further to do, how was the thing? Let's do this. So, what is vitamin D? Let's start with, uh, with the obvious question. Vitamin D is not only actually a vitamin, it's actually a hormone. So even though it is called vitamin D, it kind of functions in, okay, functions in our body like a hormone. So it's very, very important to understand that because it is a hormone, it can influence our body more than anything else, right? Uh, so, and deficiency in vitamin D can cause an array of side effects, like, uh, oh wait, we have some comments, yeah, I'm gonna pick them up in a second. Uh, it can be poor, poor bone mineralization, and that, of course, we all know because we've all been pushed uh, milk and forced with vitamin D since a very early age. Second, it's connected to diabetes, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later. Uh, it is also connected to metabolic syndrome, heart disease, even cancer and hypertension. And so, wait a second, sorry, we broke a stream on Facebook, hopefully. Hopefully we're back. Something is up with Facebook, guys. Okay, Beth is here. Hello, Beth, and hello, Maria. Nice to see you both. Uh, I'm very happy that you, you have joined me today. As usual, it's nice to have a, the usual crew. Now, let me do put, put, put quick disclaimer as well that I'm going to just run on the bottom of the screen that this is not a medical advice. So if you need a medical advice, search for help of medical professional. I am not a medical professional. I am not a dietitian. I am just a girl reading the articles online. Okay, that's that. Uh, so let's go, let's go, let's continue. Now, uh, why should you take vitamin D? Especially for us ladies with PCOS, it's really, really important because it improves fertility. Now, talking about fertility, um, it's very important to understand that fertility is important not only if you want to have kids. So in general, improved fertility, like regular periods and regular excretion of the correct uh, sex hormones is going to improve your quality of life, whether you want to or not want to have kids. That's why I always say that it's very, very important to manage your PCOS symptoms, to try to regulate your periods, no matter if you want to have kids, right? Uh, so uh, it's actually, uh, vitamin D actually contributes to better egg quality and development, which is super, super important for us women with PCOS. It actually improves menstrual regularity, regularity, so a very difficult word. word. And it had, there has been a study that I'm going to share with you a little later uh, that actually shown that uh, for women with PCOS who have been supplementing with vitamin D for three months, um, the, you know, the regularity has improved. So it's actually confirmed by a scientific study. Now, another thing is that improved fertility and pregnancy rates were noticed with a, during assisted reproduction therapy, so during Clomid. Um, so there was an, another study um, that I'm not sure actually if I'm, I have to share today, but there was another study um, that actually shown that for the women who were on Clomid, uh, on assisted yeah, fertility therapy using Clomid, had actually much better success rate and got pregnant much more often and much more successfully than the ones that weren't supplementing with vitamin D. So that's that. And why should you take it? So vitamin D as well um, improves metabolic markers. So first we had improved fertility. Now it has that improves metabolic markers. And what does it mean? It actually been shown in scientific studies to improve your insulin resistance level. So your insulin sensitivity to improve your cholesterol level 
triglyceride levels that are loosely connected to cholesterol as well. Your testosterone levels, which we know in PCOS is quite high and can cause stuff like acne, hair loss, hirsutism, etc. And also the weight gain and weight loss, right? So getting enough vitamin D can aid your weight loss, probably as a proxy through um, helping with your insulin resistance, but also um, in general, maybe, who knows? Right, uh, next one is actually better mood. Uh, so vitamin D deficiency is a significant independent predictor of depression in both women with and without PCOS. So that is not PCOS specific, but for a lot of people who are depleted with vitamin D, depression is on a higher level. Now, little side note, because of course we all know why we are majority of us are depleted in vitamin d is because we don't have enough sun exposure uh, and especially in you know like northern or very southern uh latitudes although i don't think that in very southern it is that bad but very northern latitudes for example you know uh, north of uh, uk or sweden or canada we definitely don't get enough sunshine and even when the sunshine is there the uv is very very low so it cannot actually spark enough vitamin d me myself i've been living in northern sweden for eight years and i had a big big problem with vitamin d levels so, of course, majority of us don't go out in the sun. We work inside, we work in the offices. We don't uh, spend enough time outside. And if we are outside, it's usually outside of the peak uh, peak hours or actually, you know, around the um, very early start of the day or, 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 or the dusk, dusk till dawn or dusk or dawn. Uh, so um, for that reason, we are depleted in vitamin D. So you can think actually this, um, that depression, many people think that depression is connected to darkness outside in those latitudes, but it can actually be loosely connected to, uh, to low vitamin D levels. So it is very, very interesting that it might be, might be both. Now, uh, what are the sources of vitamin D? There's of course more, uh, but uh, very good sources are eggs, fatty fish, fish oil, supplements, right? Uh, sun exposure, of course, and vitamin D supplements. Now, vitamin D supplements are very, very complex. And if you want, let me know in the comments <laughs> and I will make a video about vitamin D supplements. Um, because like even buying normal fish oil uh, is quite complicated because of course, well, many layers. Um, so, you know, you would like it to be sustainable. You would like it not to be, um, not polluted, but you know what I mean? You would like it to be from a good source. Um, you would like it to have good ratio of DHEA um, and LPEA? And not DHEA, DHA and the other type of fatty, fatty acids that is in a fish oil. So you would like it to be, um, you know, actually working because if you buy cheap fish oil, it might not be working at all. So even that or other vitamin, synthetic vitamin D supplements, of course, are very, very complex as well. They don't work for everybody. But those are the supplements that you can take. And now we have the same thing. So why should you take it? Sources of vitamin D. Yeah, eggs, fatty fish. So I am a big proponent of actually uh, trying to, as you probably guessed, uh, of getting as lot of vitamin D as you can through natural sources. So whether it is eggs, whether it is uh, fatty fish, or whether it is uh, fish oil even, which is half natural, of course, Mm, and sun exposure, of course, um, those are the best things to, to get vitamin D. Now, why? Uh, I want to touch briefly upon something. Oh, we have comments. Oh, there we go. Maria, you're always so prepared. That's because I freeze when I'm on camera. If you ask me that five minutes after, after I'm off camera, I would answer that, no problem. But excuses, excuses. Um, so yes, I want to uh, touch upon supplements. Uh, vitamin D in general, right, is important not only for women with PCOS, with fertility, um, and uh, yeah, with all, all these types of stuff, right? Fertility, mood, etc., etc. But for example, it's very important for thyroid. It is very, very important in many, many chronic diseases. And depletion in vitamin D has been shown to be actually linked to a lot of chronic diseases. So uh, as you saw on my first slide, it can be sometimes even cancer, heart uh, problems, etc., etc. Uh, so taking vitamin D is very important. Now, I didn't go in depth uh, down this rabbit hole that I'm going to be talking about, but I have heard that very often people have problem actually ingesting vitamin D supplements, especially if they are uh, 
if they are synthetic supplements. So what do I mean by that? Sometimes you can buy, um, even if you, you know, someone's gonna write great supplement, blah, 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 very high quality um, vitamin D in form of a pill. However, there is something, I, I cannot name it right now, uh, but um, there is something in uh, our body. And again, I've heard it from Dr. Berg, so it's not a scientific source, uh, but um, there's something in the cells, some dysfunction in the cells that actually is not allowing us to ingest that vitamin D from supplement. Now, is it true? I don't know, but I believe that that's what happened to me. <laughs> because when I was living in Northern Sweden, I have, uh, of course, very low vitamin D levels. And um, I was taking supplement and they didn't really help. Uh, and my vitamin D levels were still really, really low. And I was feeling like uh, on a boat constantly, like I was seriously dizzy, like I was walking like on a boat catching stuff. I was very, very weak, I was quite fainty, but that was around that time that I guys, that I told you guys before in one of my lives where I was very, very sick for around three, five months and I over exercised and under ate and all of that. So it might all of that um, mal, mal, sorb, mal Absor malabsorption, yes, but there is specific, uh, sorry, Maria said malabsorption, malabsor malabsorption, yes, but that is not actually from the gut, there's actually something in the cell from what I remember that happens, so malabsorption is very often when you have something not absorbing in your gut from what I understand, again, don't quote me at the minute, uh, but uh, there's something in our cells that is like broken, vitamin D receptor, whatever, and um, but what happened to me when I was super, super dizzy, I came to Tenerife because I live on Tenerife Canary Islands at the minute. And within a week, I was actually working outside. I was working in hotels, talking to people, being outside in the sun and in the strong sun for around six hours a day. So literally just like that, it was fixed. I was never dizzy again. I had much more energy. I felt healthy. It was amazing. So uh, I think that for many people, if you are struggling with... Um, with low vitamin D levels, I know that not everybody has a possibility to go outside during working hours or, or you know, sorry, my boyfriend is from Manchester, so I always thinking that if he would go out during the day in, in Northern England, he wouldn't get a lot of vitamin D either. So if you have a possibility, I know that not everybody loves sunbeds, but if it's for health and if it's with sunscreen, maybe that's a possibility, right? If, you, if the supplements do not work for you. But what I would say is like, you can try uh, synthetic supplements, then you can try natural stuff. Um, and then uh, natural stuff, I mean, of course, start from the food, then synthetic supplements, then uh, maybe fish oil and stuff like that. And then maybe try some exposure, real or fake. I mean, um, the the... I know that people are super scared of UV at the minute, as you can see, I'm not. Um, I know that it can cause skin cancer and then we should wear sunscreens every day. However, I believe that humans were created to be in the sunshine. So if you do it in a, just a small increments and you're never burning, uh, then it actually is good for you. Now, let me just take a sip and uh, let me just take a sip. And I'll share some um, my screen with you, and I will show you some uh, some articles very, very quickly, briefly, like we usually do. So let's let's do this. That's going to be my tagline now. Let's do this. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments right now. Why is it not showing all of them? Right. Let's start with this. Let me just see if you can see me well. Yes, you can see me very well. So I actually highlighted um, this part and this is scientific study. I will actually add it. I have the whole list. I will add them to the description on YouTube. So make sure that you check it out. So it's it's written that vitamin D deficiency is common in women with polycystic ovarian syndrome with the 67 to 85% of women with PCOS having serum concentration of vitamin D minus uh, lower than 20 micrograms per milliliter. And this is actually how uh, deficiency is being... Um, um, my God, sorry, I've been working all day. How deficiency is being uh, defined, yes, <laughs> if it's less than 20 micrograms per milliliter. Now, vitamin D deficiency may exacerbate symptoms of PCOS with observational studies showing lower um, yeah, vitamin D levels were associated with insulin resistance, ovulatory and menstrual irregularities, 
lower pregnancy success, hirsutism, hyperandrogenism, obesity, and elevated cardiovascular disease risk factors. That there is some but limited evidence for beneficial effects of vitamin D supplementation on menstrual dysfunction and insulin resistance in women with PCOS. So this is, uh, as I said, scientific article, vitamin D in the etiology and management in polycystic ovarian syndrome, super interesting stuff. Now we're going to share another one. Let me share this. There we go. Um, so again, we found that lower serum vitamin D levels were related to metabolic and hormonal disorders in women with PCOS. Specifically, PCOS patients with VDD were more likely to have dysglycemia, increased levels of fasting glucose and homeostatic model assessment with alliance and resistance compared to those without VDD. This meta-analysis found no evidence that vitamin D supplementation reduced or mitigated metabolic and hormonal dysregulations in PCOS. And that's very interesting because it, it's been shown that these women have been low in vitamin D, but taking supplements didn't fix it. But it doesn't say, maybe it says a further, further way, but I didn't read the whole thing, um, that actually doesn't show their actual levels, you know, in their cells, because it's impossible. Right, let's see another one. Maybe that's why we all feel so good when we're going to holiday and just bathe in the sun, because for once we have a good vitamin D levels. Uh, that is very interesting study because that was actually inconclusive. So vitamin D deficiency is highly prevalent in PCOS women in Scotland, because that uh, study was in Scotland, and a larger proportion of PCOS patients than control women were found to be vitamin D deficient. We also demonstrate correlations of vitamin D status with insulin sensitivity, HDLC, and C-reactive protein in PCOS patients, which, support the increasing, which supports the increasing evidence that vitamin D deficiency is associated with multiple metabolic risk factors in PCOS women. However, here it, there was some kind of vague that they weren't like, like, it wasn't possible for them to like link it one to one, right? Uh, so that was a little different study. Let's see what you have in the comments. I am lucky that the supplements seem to work. I did uh, get to have vitamin D from the sun for a week or so. That's amazing. Where did, where did you get it? Was it just beautiful weather in England? So then went back to supplements now and it has been non-stop rain. I know we've been talking to my boyfriend's family in Manchester and uh, was a uh, there was a week when there had really, really beautiful weather, but very quickly after it was rain all the time and it didn't stop for a long time. So, <laughs> so that's that, unfortunately, that's how it goes. Uh, as soon as they open Tenerife uh, Bath, you should definitely come and visit us. Uh, it should be pretty straightforward. Right, guys, I'm having a sip because I wanted to go through it very, very quickly. If you want me to make any um, in-depth uh, video about choosing um, vitamin D, <laughs> vitamin D uh, supplements. Beth is saying good weather in early April for one week. <laughs> uh, if you want me to make a video about choosing um, vitamin D supplements and are a little bit more in depth, oh my god, my neighbors are playing some loud music, then please let me know. I'm going to take a sip and please, all the last questions uh, come through. So if you are watching on YouTube, that's going to be the end of this video. Uh, the rest portion, if we have any, is going to be on Facebook. So make sure you watch on both. It's just uh, just a YouTube thing. Right, any last questions? I don't think so. We have a few of you. If you're watching on a replay, also let me know in the comments. Uh, leave me a like and let me know where you're watching from. I would love to get to know you guys. And if you ever watch any of my videos, leave me suggestions on what, on what video you would like to see next time. So we're going to be wrapping this up. It was a quick one today. Fantastic. And uh, yeah, I will see you here next week at 5 p.m. London time. Kisses and see you soon. Thank you.